If you're a content creator, especially a streamer, then you've probably heard about AV1 that's supposed to bring your content to the next level. I'm talking about lower bit rates, but higher quality, resolution and frame rates. And did I mention higher quality? In fact, if everything goes well, then this video was encoded and uploaded to YouTube and Facebook in AV1. But what is so special about AV1? How do you get into it? And should you consider buying one of these Intel Arc GPUs from our sponsor, Intel? who sent over this uh, ARC A750 for demonstration purposes. Given that they were the first to offer GPU accelerated AV1 encoding, I thought it was pretty fitting. Still, all knowledge bomb that I'm about to drop is relevant for every GPU that supports AV1 encoding. Your mother no teach, never mind. I teach you lah. Before we talk about AV1, which is a codec, we firstly need to talk about what is a codec. Basically, it is what you should thank every day for being able to stream and store thousands of cat videos in your phone without running out of storage and bandwidth. Why? Okay, take 1080p videos for instance. If we are talking about 24-bit color depth, uncompressed raw 1080p footage, then you'll need 6.22 megabytes per frame, which adds up to about 8.95 gigabytes per minute if we are looking at 24 FPS footage. Just let that sink in for a minute. 8.95 gigabytes per minute. Now, a video codec has one job only basically, that is to compress videos to a more reasonable size to be transmitted over the internet and also to decompress it uh, as you play it back on your devices. That's pretty much it. While existing codecs like H.264 and H.265 or HEVC already do a pretty good job at that, with content going up there in resolution and frame rates, I'm talking about 4K, 60fps uh, or 8K, we we really do need an upgrade or nobody is going to be able to watch or stream this content on the internet. Especially if you live in a country like mine, Malaysia, where the internet is, let's say, tak berapa consistent. AV1 or AO Media Video 1 is an open royalty video coding format that is made specifically for the internet. Sparing you the long technical explanation, basically AV1 uses an existing process called a block-based frequency transform to break down every video frame into smaller blocks. It then uses new mathematical techniques and more clever algorithms to store all this data in a way that is uh, easily restored when needed. In even shorter terms, it's not reinventing the wheel. It's just making one that rolls more efficiently. But in what way though? So we used Netflix VMAF or Video Multi-Method Assessment Fusion, which measures how close a video looks to a reference, in our case, an uncompressed video. And based on our tests, uh, the increased encoding efficiency in AV1 means that you'll be able to stream at really low bit rates like two megabits per second, which was previously a blurry mess with older codecs like NVENC H.264 and AMF H.264. This this, in my opinion, is the biggest advantage of AV1, especially when bandwidth is a luxury. Of course, you can also achieve the same or even better quality as other codecs with much lower bit rates. Taking a look at this video encoded with AV1 at what I view as the bare minimum for streaming in 1080p, which is 3.5 megabits per second, we can see that it performs better than both the H.264 encoders running at almost double the bit rate at 6 megabits per second. We're talking about more clarity and details at nearly half the file size. Lastly, you can achieve higher resolution and quality as other codecs at the same bit rates. Now you can finally stream in 4K 60fps at bit rates that are more reasonable like 10 megabits per second. For your reference, my recommended bit rates for streaming at these different resolutions are as follows.
So both the viewer and streamer save on bandwidth or are able to stream higher quality content, which is a win-win for everyone. On top of that, as a bonus, AV1 videos process incredibly fast when uploaded to YouTube, which is why I'm considering exporting all our future content in AV1, considering how much money I'll be saving every year when storing these videos. So how does one AV1? To encode and export videos in AV1, you can use DaVinci Resolve Studio version 18.1 and newer, which natively supports it, or Premiere Pro, but you'll need to use a plugin like Vocoder for that to work. To stream or record AV1 content, the easiest way would be using OBS, which has officially supported AV1 encoding and streaming about six months back. Just go into settings, output, and switch the encoder to AV1. Of course, of course, if you want to use GPU accelerated AV1 encoding, then you'll need a GPU that supports it. Finally, let's talk about the spending of the hard earned cash. I'm going to break you, potential AV1 users, into three groups. Group number one are people that already have existing GPUs from previous generations that are decent at gaming already but do not support AV1 but you want AV1. Looking at the cheapest offerings from all three teams, it is evident that the ARC A380 is the best and most budget-friendly option uh, to give you AV1 encoding as a secondary GPU. Zero contest because it's really hashtag cheap buy. Group number two are people who are shopping for a new GPU for both gaming and streaming in 1080p and say 1440p. Looking at offerings from all three teams, it seems like the ARC A750 with its new price drop down to about 200 US dollars is the strongest contender budget-wise. But if you want to spend a little bit more and get a little bit more performance with Team Red and Team Green, they're still pretty decent value. Group number three are bangsawans and ballers like me who don't really look at price tags. In this case, why are you even here? Just go and buy the most expensive GPU you can find. Lah. Honestly, AV1 really surprised me. It actually exceeded my expectations. It is one thing to see other content creators like Epos Vox talk about it. It's another to actually see it for yourself. Ultimately, no cap, but I'm just grateful that we have a new player like Intel in the GPU market so that we don't have to pay exuberant prices to the other two teams. One team is so much worse than the other, but I'm not going to name which team. But you tao tao lah. Huh? We don't have to pay so much just to get into new technology like AV1. Uh, you can just get the A380 as a secondary GPU to your already good GPU. Stick it in and get AV1 encoding or buy an A750 at a reasonable price and get to game and stream on the same card. Not a bad deal, really. Hopefully, Intel will continue to develop their GPUs so that they can actually compete at the higher end uh, so that eventually they will help bring down prices for everyone. Anyways, that's everything I have to say about AV1. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll try my best to reply to each and every one of you. Also, if you find this video helpful, don't forget to like and share and maybe check out the links in the description to support people who support us to make more content like this. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that notification bell harder than you hit alternate F4 when you rage quit. And follow us on TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram to see more shenanigans from the Mop House crew. Again, my name is Bang Sawan Shane, and I will see you in the next one.